What is EBITDA? EBITDA is the unlevered measure of a company's recurring earnings before any financing or accounting decisions have been taken into account. This measure provides a very clean view of how a company is performing. Simply put, EBITDA is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization. EBITDA can be used as a proxy for free cash flow, though they should not be confused as EBITDA does not take into account changes in working capital or capital expenditures. In addition, EBITDA is often normalized for non-recurring and one-time items, thus ensuring standardization across companies. So how do people use it? How is it calculated? Let's talk about that next. This chart provides the calculated values for both Capital IQ's normalized EBITDA and a non-normalized presentation. The chart depicts core items from the income statement in millions of US dollars, in this case for an oil company. A clear delta exists between the normalized Capital IQ and non-normalized values in both the depreciation and amortization and unusual items line items. In the case of depreciation and amortization, there's a $1.7 billion delta due to Capital IQ's normalization process, while the unusual items row contains a $4 billion delta due to a one-time gain made by the company. Capital IQ's normalization used a more comprehensive presentation of the company's depreciation and amortization in the first case, while in the latter, Capital IQ removed this gain to provide a clearer understanding of the state of the company's operating performance. The net result in this case is an approximately $2 billion delta, which is a material difference when valuing a company either on a standalone or relative basis. As we've discussed, Capital IQ's EBITDA is a highly normalized measure that enables meaningful analysis across countries, sectors, and reporting standards. From a credit perspective, the standardized nature of EBITDA provides a clean metric with which to measure both a company's ability to service its current debt as well as pay back bondholders upon maturity.